It is the start of the year and this is chapter one. This year I am hoping to learn how to be a better person for the people around me and I really want to go solo camping. I am also praying and believing for favor for my second semester and I am praying for the end of COVID, please. <laughs> I really put a please in the end. Those are my faith goals for 2022. Faith goals are essentially just a redefined, more mature version of a New Year's resolution, you know, because it's essentially just what you are in faith for, what you're believing, and what you hope to happen. So those are mine. This is essentially how I often start my year for about five to six years now. But apart from my faith goals, I am also hungry. Every beginning and middle of the year, uh, the church where I go to essentially holds a prayer and fasting. It really is a different experience and if you're not particularly familiar with what people do when they pray and fast, fasting in its basic most common form is just stopping from eating. But there are actually a lot of different types of fasting commitments, if you would call it that. There is a water only. You also have a liquid only and you also have a one meal a day they're more i would call them more modern ways of fasting like a social media fast you also have secular media fast the idea is that things that you're quite dependent on or maybe things that will be a little hard to let go of i essentially fast for religious and spiritual reasons and it's really by letting go of the things that I daily depend on that I get to experience more of God and less of myself. It's a it's a very different experience. I was crying a while ago while eating soup. Not because I was hungry, but because I was reflecting on how faithful God has been in my life last year. Kissing in the front of my car under the stars. I want you to know I'll take this love slow How did you get so cool? I'm just a fool Falling for you Don't wanna let you go I'll take this love slow We got so many years To learn each other's ways
So essentially the way my fast works is, so if there's five days, I allocated two days for liquids only, thus I can only eat soup. And then I also have two days where I am allowed to eat one meal. And then my last day is always, I do just water only or a water fast because I'm about to eat after that or when I break the fast, so. You know, when I am going to do some physical activity, then I would really have one meal on that day. But then if I'm really not doing anything like today, then I'll just stick with a liquid only or sometimes war only. So it really depends on your schedule and the physical work that I'm doing. Also knowing what I can take. So. because I cannot watch YouTube videos. Not that I can't, but I chose not to. So I'm on a social media fast. I don't really use social media unless YouTube is considered social media, but I don't really go on Instagram daily. But I also went on a YouTube fast because I watch YouTube videos every single day. It's always difficult at first because there's always that urge, but then you realize you can't. So it really forces you to think of other things that you can do or you should do or that you want to do. For me, that's finishing this birdhouse.
Today is the last day of fasting and in the past five days I just feel alive and satisfied if that makes sense. I have been writing down every single thing that I find applicable in my life after I read the Bible and I haven't been doing that in a while because most of the time I would just read and then I would leave it at that but during the prayer and fasting week or the five days of prayer and fasting I really in a way forced myself to not leave this couch unless I have written something down. It, it is such a different experience and I was reading this passage in Job and this is Job 23 12 in the ESV version. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my portion of food and I think that very much sums up the experience of fasting. In the end, you can actually say that you know what it's like to treasure the words of God more than your portion of food. But before we end this video, I just want to read out really the passage or the verse that I believe God is promising me this year. I randomly stumbled upon this. I wasn't even looking for it. I just randomly saw it on my notes and I don't even remember putting it there. But this one is in Isaiah 43 too, in the ESV version again. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. And I know that this passage in Isaiah is not just going to be true for me, but it's also gonna be true for you. I don't know who's watching this, but here's to the start of our year. 